Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we're seeing another green day today, guys. The market cap uh, up near about $1.7 trillion, as you guys can see up here. And we've got Bitcoin dominance still, uh, you know, above that 40% level right now. It's at about uh, 43%, just shy of 43%. And, uh, you know, on the charts, many cryptocurrencies are looking green. Uh, we did see a significant rebound, or we are seeing a significant rebound uh, out of that big dip that we recently saw over the last few days. Bitcoin right now trading at about 39600 Ethereum trading at about 2800 Binance Coin trading at about $373, and XRP over a dollar finally again, so uh, up 8.8% on the 24 hour, uh, trading at about a dollar and two cents. So XRP V-shape recovery like many other cryptocurrencies as well. We are clearly seeing this inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, continue, and uh, hopefully we are going to continue making our way to the upside. Of course, there still is a long ways to go uh, before we reach all time highs. It's kind of almost like a We've reset uh, the chart and the price action and the movement, and now we kind of have to just grind our way back to the upside. You know, this happens in a lot of markets. Of course, we are always at the mercy of Bitcoin. I've got Bitcoin up here on the hourly, and you guys can see we are seeing a, a similar pattern here, that inverted head and shoulders pattern, and uh, also trudging to the upside. Of course, Bitcoin, the pulse of the market. If I bring Bitcoin back here on the daily, you guys can see we are accumulating, or rather have accumulated in this range. This is where we saw a lot of buy orders take place, and so uh, what was that price point? It was roughly around $30,000, give or take. 30, 31, 32,000, and now we are seeing uh, Bitcoin up, you know, 10 $10,000, uh, give or take, what would that be in a percentage term from the bottom here? Uh, so yeah, we are up about 32% off that bottom. Of course, still uh, significantly lower from the all-time high. Uh, nevertheless, a lot of evidence supporting that, you know, this crypto crash is just another blip on the map, you know, uh, towards the bigger picture of new all-time highs. Now, uh, for altcoins, I think that that is very likely. For Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's it's difficult to know at this point in time. I mean, I guess we could ultimately see Bitcoin go on a mega rally, blowing all expectations out of the water. Uh, but I'm going to keep my uh, assumptions fairly conservative, right? I've got my targets. How long is this going to take? Well, you know, that's another question. I have XRP up here on the daily, and um, I'm just going to show you guys this. Again, I uh, brought this up in another video that I did, and I'm uh, just going to take this fractal pattern here, because now it's looking like we are formulating something similar to what we saw back here back in 2017. So if I bring this over here, and uh, you guys can see if I overlay that pattern, we are seeing uh, very, very similar moves for XRP price. Of course, in this most recent trend, you guys can see we did wick down further down here, but we did finally end up closing in and around this spot here, which was at that critical mark of resistance, 80 cents, give or take. So uh, I'm just going to put a horizontal line there. And uh, yeah, so you guys can see this formulation, this pattern dipping down here on the fractal from back in 2017. Uh, found resistance, bounced a couple of times before we really kind of made our way up. Then I believe this was the 0.5 level on the Fibonacci. And uh, what else did we notice? That Nike swoosh pattern uh, before we broke up to the upside making new all-time highs. So how long is this going to take, right? Um, well, in 2017, how long did it take? I'm just going to throw up a date range tool here. And uh, from this high all the way to the breakout date, it took roughly 209 days. Um, 209 days, that's a significant amount of time. If I were to bring us from this inter-year high uh, to today, this is only 42 days. So uh, if I bring this back out and we take a look at what date that is, uh, down here, you guys can see that would be approximately if we are following what happened back in 2017, which chances are it's not going to follow exactly. As you guys can even see uh, over here, we have dipped down sooner than this fractal pattern dipped down. So if we take a look at this, dipped down sooner, this is about 21 days sooner. So three weeks sooner than we saw this kind of pattern. But even if we were to take, you know, for sake of argument, and we were to take a look at this, 
Uh, when could this happen? Well, we could see this breakout by November of 2021. So several months away still. Of course, I'm not banking on the time frame. As I mentioned again, it's just uh, something else to pay attention to that it could take that long. It might not uh, happen right away. Although I am fairly confident because we are seeing uh, you know, these kinds of retracements and these kinds of patterns happening sooner than they did back in 2017. So this bodes well for the XRP price uh, action to move quicker along in the cycle. Um, but that's not guaranteed, of course. And again, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. You know, I do this on YouTube uh, to share what my thoughts are about the market with you guys. And so, uh, you know, it's your hard-earned money. You've got to do what you see fit with your hard-earned money. I'm just letting you guys know what I'm doing. This from XRP Crypto Wolf, the SEC wants more Ripple employees to testify. So as of now, 10 current and former Ripple employees are already set to testify on various matters. And so what's going on here? I'm guessing they need to know more information. They just aren't getting enough uh, information from the employees from the testimony that they already have. So they are calling on more employees to testify. So including former Ripple CFO Ron Will and former Spring Senior Vice President Ethan Beard. The SEC argues that it has to extend the numbers of depositions because of evidence developed over the course of the discovery and the sheer scale of Ripple's unlawful XRP offering. So they are suggesting that, you know, this um, offering of XRP is, uh, is at such a level that we are beside ourselves and we need to keep digging to find out uh, who else uh, knows more about this illegal, in their words, illegal XRP or unlawful XRP offering. Pretty ridiculous if you ask me. I mean, there's already a lot of evidence suggesting that, uh, you know, XRP, clearly a currency, it has been deemed a currency by FinCEN and it is utilized in an ecosystem today. It isn't like an ICO. And I think this is what gets a lot of people a little bit PO'd about the SEC lawsuit is that they are treating XRP like any other company, uh, for example, the ones offering ICOs back in 2017, where they were clear scams and they just picked up, took the money and ran. Uh, one just recently was exposed, the DeFi 100 coin. Those guys actually exposed themselves, posted on uh, social media or somewhere saying, look guys, you got fooled. We're taking your money and we are getting the F out of Dodge. Anyway, um, so this is the latest in the SEC uh, court news with regards to the Ripple case. Not too much else to discuss there. Uh, I also saw this guy's from DJ Peter Vast, though PNC Bank, which is a Ripple partner, reports brisk B2B enrollment for real-time payments. The past year has seen the emergence of what PNC Financial Services Group Chris Ward calls the immediate economy. And that has made all the difference in the bank's real-time payment program. So, uh, you guys remember back in 2019, PNC First U.S. Bank did go live on the Ripple Payments Network. And so, uh, instantaneous payments has been going through PNC Bank since 2019. And now, of course, that was before the pandemic. But now, uh, the immediate economy is clearly something that Chris Ward sees as something that has been uh, developing over the last year or so. That is really, really important for the bank. So, he calls this the immediate economy. And that has made all the difference for the bank's real-time payments program. More than 250 of the bank's wholesale clients are now regularly using PNC's connection to the Clearinghouse's RTP, or Real-Time Payments Network, which is up from just a handful a year ago. As so much more gets digitized, there's more of a need to have funds immediately, said Ward, who is the executive vice president and head of product for treasury management at PNC, which is connected to both TCH's RTP network and the bank-backed Zelle peer-to-peer -peer transfer app. So PNC clearly seeing a benefit for real-time payments network and also a Ripple partner has been since 2019. All great news there for PNC Bank. Uh, also, guys, did you notice this? These are the 2021, or rather the list, for the 2021 CNBC Disruptor 50 companies. And guys, yes, Ripple did make it on the list. They are down here. Uh, number 38, I believe. Yes, number 38 on the list. Making waves in crypto regulation. Interesting that they're noted as... Um, you know, from CNBC, at least this is the perception CNBC has of Ripple making waves in crypto regulation. Now, we know Ripple has a lot of uh, lobbying power, has put a lot of dollars towards lobbying for the crypto industry. They are number 38 on the list, of course. Uh, I'm sure they would like to be known for cross-border payments and efficiency, frictionless markets, you know, with the technology, the XRPL that they have developed. But CNBC is seeing them as making waves in crypto regulation, which is also not a bad thing. I think this might 
might even be a good omen for um, you know what's going on in court right now. And I don't think it's a big secret either. I think that a lot of these cryptocurrency companies are following this very slowly. Of course, the crypto industry in Silicon Valley specifically is very small, and uh, you know a lot of these guys are friends. You know, you've seen these documentaries where Charlie Lee is talking to Brian Armstrong, and I mean these guys have been in the business for a long time, so I'm sure there's a lot of uh, chatter, 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 especially with regards to this lawsuit because this is going to affect the entire cryptocurrency industry in the United States. Uh, I also noticed on this list we did have uh, Flutterwave here at number 21, who is a Ripple enabled partner. So uh, very interesting to note that. More developments on the XRPL, guys. David Schwartz has said that he has submitted a proposal via GitHub that provides a path towards adding NFT support on the XRPL. This coming from Michael at Valve5 Links, the CTO of Ripple, David Schwartz, has submitted a proposal via GitHub that provides a path towards adding NFT support on the XRP ledger. Mr. Schwartz's proposal builds on earlier recommendations by the team at XRPL Labs and suggests the introduction of extensions to the XRP ledger that would add a native non-fungible token type along along with operations to enumerate, purchase, sell, and hold such tokens. So the proposal, which has been co-authored alongside Anakal Manhotra and Nick Bugalis, introduces two new objects and one new ledger structure to the XRP ledger. The first object uh, to be proposed is the NFT token object that represents a single NFT and holds all the data associated with it. The second object is the NFT token offer that represents an offer to buy or sell slash transfer an NFT token with respect to the ledger structure. The proposal suggests adding an NFT token page which contains a set of NFT objects owned by a single account. So, uh, more development on the XRPL. Of course, we already know the XRPL is uh, capable of transferring uh, these types of NFTs, uh, but I'm, I'm assuming there are different ways to do this. And so, uh, David Schwartz uh, clearly uh, wanting to be on that bleeding edge of technology and wanting to make the XRPL as robust as possible uh, with regards to these new and emerging uh, things that uh, you know people in the real world are going to be buying and selling uh, in the coming years. So NFTs, of course, that big buzzword. And I wasn't going to bring this up. My wife sent this to me yesterday, just, uh, you know, as a matter of interest. Charlie bit my finger. I don't know if you guys remember this. I don't know how old you are. Uh, this was a huge YouTube video back about a decade ago. Uh, and now it is to be removed from YouTube because it just sold as an NFT for $760,000. Yeah, go figure the beloved video and meme Charlie Bit My Finger will be leaving YouTube soon. If you guys are not familiar, uh, just look it up. Charlie Bit My Finger, you know, it was kind of at the beginning of uh, meme culture. Uh, and it is sold as a non-fungible token for $760,999 by the original family who captured the moment on tape. We are going to start to see a lot more of this kind of thing. And, um, you know, just to this point here, the XRPL has to constantly be upgraded, updated, if it's going to um, perform, if it's going to be able to perform these tasks at that level, which the customer continually requires, which is going to continue, right? The standard is going to continue to go up and up and up. Uh, so, you know, this functionality, retooling the XRPL, always good to see that there is development going on there. Unlike the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, as a side note, XRP Crypto Wolf posted this. So more towards that fact, developing the XRPL, Ripple launched the XRP Ledger Grants program. The website up here is xrplgrants.org. And so about this, the XRPL Ledger is an open source, decentralized and permissionless public blockchain. And XRPL Grants fund select open source projects that continue to advance the growing XRP Ledger community. We fund both select core technology and end user application, including but not limited to NFTs, core infrastructure, developer tooling, developer UX, and security. So um, for those developers out there, there is now a grant program for the XRPL. Money is being earmarked millions of dollars to support the XRP ledger because we know that the more utility that is derived from the XRP ledger, uh, you know, the more use cases we will be able to find. And therefore, just incidentally, XRP will eventually gain more value as uh, as we see more developments on the XRPL. So thanks so much to XRP Crypto Wolf. Great news there uh, with regards to these types of developments. And so, you know, despite a market collapsing and, um, you know, now rebounding, we are seeing very good movement for the crypto space. We did lose about $1 trillion, as was uh, noted by many news outlets. Now we are up again to $1.7 trillion, give or take. Markets have rebounded quite a bit. 
right? XRP price was down in and around 65 cents. That was as far as it went before rebounding back up. And now just like that, we're over a dollar again. So a very, I guess in some people's eyes, very unexpected type of crash, but I think a very necessary type of crash because it just goes to the point that, you know, markets don't go up forever. We are going to witness crashes and uh, because we are in cryptocurrency, because we've chosen to be in cryptocurrency, these crashes are volatile. But that said, guys, the gains are also exorbitant because the movements are so volatile. We're in a spec market right now. We are trading based on, hmm, where do we think this coin is going based on, you know, the research that we've done. Um, essentially right now, uh, th there isn't too much other than a lot of chattering heads in the crypto space talking about their projects and discussing what they will be doing in the future. There are no real use cases for cryptocurrency. I mean, there are some, but most of these projects, like 95% of these projects, let's go back here for a second. Look how many coins there are in the space, guys. 10, over 10,000 cryptocurrencies in the space. And most of these projects don't have a use case. There are only a handful that are really doing something right now. One of them being the company Ripple, uh, leveraging RippleNet and utilizing XRP in uh, countries around the world. Not so much in the United States, but countries around the world. And so when we're looking at this spec market and we're thinking to ourselves, well, you know, what coin should I be interested in? Is this a thing? Are we going to see this move further? And even if we just treat cryptocurrency as a trading asset, is this, or is it, are we going to see longevity in this? Well, I think Raul Powell made a great point here, and I saw this on Twitter. Something to get your head around, guys. He states this very eloquently. Headline, a major asset class crashed 42% in 14 days, wiping out $1.02 trillion in value in an orgy of liquidation of people up to 100x levered with very low regulation. Okay, so we got to take this into account. People are leveraged over 100x and the market crashed 42% in 14 days. Many tokens fell up to 70%, including unregulated lending and borrowing business. Okay, and he states, this was the headline. Below the headline though, crypto had a major, major VAR shock test and nothing happened. VAR, V-A-R, for those of you guys who do not know, value at risk is a measure of the risk of lost for investments. For example, if a portfolio of stocks has a one day 5% VAR of $1 million, that means that there is a 0 0.05 probability that the portfolio will fall in value by more than $1 million over a one day period if there is no trading. So just to give you guys uh, an example of what he's talking about there, Crypto had a major, major shock test and nothing, a major, major VAR shock test and nothing happened. Leverage liquidation was offset by over collateralization. No one was left holding the baby. No firm went under. The Fed didn't need to step in. DeFi didn't break and carried on near normal. There were no daisy chains of collateral losses. There was no collateral pressure. Stable coins remained stable. A few exchanges went down for over an hour or two. No exchange, big losses occurred. No need to mutualize losses either. No protocol failed. No firms needed rapid funding. So to his point, no one had open-ended losses. The system didn't break. It offered zero systemic risk to the broader financial world. Speculators lost money and that is it. He finalizes this statement by saying, this is what I first saw in crypto back in 2012, a new anti-fragile financial system that doesn't break in times of stress, where ownership of assets is clear and losses are not mutualized to taxpayers. This is a big two weeks for crypto and the future financial system. Ultimately, what Raul Pal is saying, the cryptocurrency market, decentralized finance, does not rely on government and regulators to say, well, we got to do this and we got to do that. And if we don't do this and that, right? It is a self-sustaining system that can march on its own merits. We have seen crashes. Speculators have lost money, but in good times, speculators can make money. And uh, I think to his point here, this is how the system should be. New investors coming into this space get super freaked out though, uh, you know, these traditional types of investors because they don't see the regulation in cryptocurrency. And ironically, they get worried about, well, is my money safe here? Well, to Raul Powell's point, could you say this about the traditional stock market? 
Absolutely not. We're moving in the way of decentralized finance, and uh, this, I think, could be a model moving forward. Of course, guys, always make sure that you know what you're buying. The real coins with the real value are going to be the coins with the use cases. The XRP Ledger has a grant program funding developers to continue working on the XRPL. Uh, we are seeing new updates all the time. We are seeing real world use cases like PNC Bank, who is a Ripple enabled partner. And so when you're investing, I mean, yeah, there are over 10,000 coins you can invest in, but I'd rather put my hard earned dollars into a cryptocurrency that I know has a future. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.